bridge for it. It is a joy to be with you all, and uh, as uh, Brother Larry was mentioning, uh, we've been together a couple of times. And, uh, North Carolina, I heard him preach, and then uh, Mount Vernon, Ohio, where my brother-in-law pastors, uh, he was up there once, and uh, we uh, we had him down in Georgia uh, and last month. We had a good time there, and uh, yeah, I know it's a bit of a drive. I just experienced it, but uh, y'all mark it on your calendars, Lord willing. Uh, the uh, fourth Saturday in June uh, next year we'll do it again. Anybody? Uh, you know, and uh, um, I don't know for sure what the lineup will look like, but the church did like Brother Larry, so uh, so maybe he'll be back. And uh, uh, but uh, we're we're looking forward to um, good time, good time again next year, unless the Lord comes back. Amen. Amen. Then we'll have a better time. Amen. Uh, but uh, I do appreciate Brother Larry and the church, the invitation to come. It's always a joy for me to be able to, uh, to preach and uh, especially to be able to, to come to a fellowship meeting like this. I tell you, in the times that we live, especially, these are nice. Uh, it's right. like, uh, if I can say it, it's like heaven on earth. Um, and, uh, and, and certainly... Um, good to see some familiar faces and good to see some new faces as well. And, uh, you know, I uh, um, do bring you greetings from Sovereign Grace Baptist Church in Hortense, Georgia. Amen. And uh, I've only been there for a little over a year now. Um, previously, I was way up in northern Ohio, but I grew up. I grew up in, uh, in, in, in the, the northeast corner of Kentucky, so this is kind of, this is kind of almost like coming home, um, you know, close enough, uh, closest I've been in a while, and uh, certainly, certainly thankful for it. Uh, I do appreciate the church, though, for the invitation, the, uh, the hospitality already. And the love offering, and uh, certainly, certainly the uh, cabin is nice, and we just appreciate it. Um, so brother, brother Larry, I, I didn't, you didn't mention, is there a time limit? Or? No, okay. we good. don't do that here. Okay, <laughs> I'll try to remember that for next time. <laughs> uh, if you have your Bibles, let's go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 5. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20 and 21. Isaiah 5, verses 20 and 21, it says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, Amen. that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Right. Man. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we are thankful for your blessings. We thank thee for the time that we have together together to worship you. We thank thee for this church, for the New Testament Baptist Church, for her pastor. Lord, for the truths that they've stood for. Uh, we thank thee for the other churches that have come and are represented here tonight. We pray for each one. Lord, we pray that you'll Bless this service. We're thankful for the songs that have been sung, for the prayers, Lord, for uh, for each and every part of this meeting. We pray now for the word that is preached, that it may be pre preached in truth and received as such. And our Father, we pray that you will forgive us of our sins. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You know, as I was coming... In here, I, I'd already prepared the message. I had no clue that, uh, that this church meets 
on the battlefield. I, I, I didn't know about that until I got here. But I, I saw all the signs about Fort Donaldson, and I saw all the different things around here, and I thought, wow, that's something else, you know? That's something I'm kind of interested in, my kids are interested in, and all of that. Uh, and some 160 years ago, this place was a lot different than what it is now. Yep. And as I was thinking about that, the reality is that regardless of where your church meets, Regardless of where your home is, you also are meeting, sleeping, eating, drinking, living your life on a battlefield today. Right. Right. That we all, even if there's not a sign for it, even if there's not a historical marker marking it out, we all are living our lives on a battlefield. It may not be a physical battlefield, but it is a spiritual one. That's right. right. Amen. And this world is becoming more and more evident every day that we are living that kind of a life mm -hmm. on a battlefield. Now I pray, I pray that we don't see the kind of bloodshed like what our ancestors did mm -hmm. 160 years ago. Yeah. It was awful. But we may someday see it, right? It may happen. But whether we see the physical or not, we every day are reminded of the spiritual. Amen. And this text in Isaiah isn't about America, but it's very applicable to what's going on in our world. He says, Woe to them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light, and light for darkness to put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Mm -hmm. The landscape around here has changed. The times have changed. You know, those, those brave men that fought, many of them were church folks. Some of them weren't. But the ones that were, they probably met in a church building. They didn't have any pads in their pews. Right. They sure didn't have air conditioner. And I'm thankful for those sorts of things, mm -hmm. especially when the temperature gets to be about 110 degrees mm -hmm. or feels like it. And so I'm thankful for electricity and things like that. And I'm thankful for some changes, but the thing about it is that God has not changed. Amen. And, 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 and people, people really haven't changed either. Right. People are still depraved. Amen. Yeah. And, 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 and when, we, when we look about this and we think about it, the things in the Old Testament, some preachers will say, well, that's just Old Testament stuff. It's not applicable. Oh, it is. Right. Amen. It is. You're right. I'd like to remind you that the early church, when those men were out preaching, Guess what they were preaching from? They didn't have the New Testament. There you go. They were preaching from the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. And we miss a lot of things if we don't get into the full scriptures and see these things. The title of my message is Clarity in Confusion. Clarity in Confusion. We do live in a confusing world. Mm -hmm. As we wage, as we find ourselves in this battle, in this battle-torn world, we're surrounded by folks they call evil good and good evil. You're right. Words are being twisted in a big, big way. As I said, I like history. I don't always like the things I read about in history, but I do like history. There's a book written called 1984. In there, right. war is peace, ignorance is strength, freedom is slavery. We're almost in that kind of a society. 
words are being redefined before our very eyes. Amen. And if you don't already have one, I would encourage you to get a hold of an old dictionary. I'm sure you all already have a good King James Bible. Yeah. But if you don't have that, get that too. Right. The latest definition that was changed was the word female. And uh, then uh, in the Merriam-Webster online dictionary, one of the one of the definitions, it was someone having a gender identity that is the opposite of a male. That's just weird. Right. That's not right. But that's what is being put out there. Right. And our young people are being taught, taught this stuff. You got it. Confusion. Confusion all the way around. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, if you want to turn there with me, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Verse 33. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in the all churches of the saints. Amen. God is not the author of confusion. Amen. Amen. The confusion that we see out here in the world, and there's a lot of it. There's confusion over what a woman is. There's confusion over what marriage is. There's confusion over what churches are. There's confusion over what baptism is. There's confusion over when the world began, how old the universe is, all sorts of confusion. Right. God's not the author of that. Amen. God's not the author of anything. Don't blame God for the confusion that's out there. Amen. You go into the bookstore and you look for a Bible, and and, 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 and they'll take you and, they, and they'll take you to the to the bookshelves, and you'll see all sorts of different Bibles. <coughs> they don't all say the same thing. Right. Truth is, uh, truth is very narrow, folks. Amen. Two plus two is four. Mm -hmm. There can be multiple wrong answers to the question of two plus two. There's only one right answer. Amen. When it comes to things like marriage, gender confusion, and that sort of thing, can we find clarity in it? We can. As God's people, we can. Right. We can see through all this confusion. The Bible. The Bible must be our ultimate authority in matters of faith, practice, and everything else it touches upon. Uh, amen. When those soldiers were here, I love when God gives good illustrations, you know. It seems like it all kind of fits together. That's not coincidence. Are you right? You know, when the blue and the gray showed up here at this place, they all had a purpose. They had something that they were fighting for. They had a weapon that they used. Right or wrong, whatever it was, they had a cause they believed in. Mm -hmm. You and I, we have a weapon. Amen. The world is out there fighting for something they believe in. But the thing is, what they're standing on is shifting. Amen. Every year, every generation, it moves. Right. It goes here, it goes there. I mean, can you imagine? It's so much into the dark. 
that you can't define what a woman is. Being so much wondering whether the world's going to end because of global warming or global cooling or whatever. Right. You know, trying to figure out with every thing that comes along in science. I said, well, we're missing this link and that link. And we found DNA and dinosaur bones and all this sort of, hey, rest easy. We've got peace. Why? Because we can rest on God's word. Amen. You see. You see. Over in the book of Mark chapter 10, when we stand on the word of God, we're standing on something solid. Everything else is sinking sand. Amen. Amen. Mark chapter 10 and verse 6. But from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. Amen. From the beginning of the creation, God said to Job, were you there when I laid the foundations of the world? Job wasn't there. I wasn't there. Guess what? We have an eyewitness account. Amen. We have a relationship. We know who was there. Yeah. Amen. And he said, in the beginning of the creation. Amen. In the beginning of the creation, God made them man with female. And when God was done, the end of those six days, he looked down. You can go and check it out in Genesis. He said it was very good. Amen. Amen. It was very good. There was no he, she's, or she, he's, or anything like that going on at the Garden of Eden. There you go. There was no confusion. Adam knew exactly what Eve was. And Eve knew what Adam was. And it was because God made them in his image. Amen. For his glory. And it was all very good. And when we look at the creation, even this side of the fall, even this side of the fall, we can see the differences in male and female, man and woman, and we can see how they work together and fit together and they complement each other mm -hmm. to the glory of God. Amen. Six thousand years of world history. Amen. And we can't improve on God's plan. Right. Man may try. Well, what do they get? A bigger mess. There you go. Look, look what's going on right now. This whole thing about monkeypox. Folks, don't let them scare you about that. That is an STD. Right. You want to know how to prevent that sort of thing? Get married. Man and woman. That's it. There you go. That's it. And some things can be approved upon, and I'm thankful for that. You know, I was thinking about my drive here. Imagine a hundred years ago trying to get here from Brunswick, Georgia to here. That would have been a pretty rough drive. <laughs> Might have taken me a little bit longer. <laughs> but that's okay. You know, I'm thankful we, we've improved on those things. I'm thankful that God gave us that ability that we improved upon that. And, and and I mean if some other genius out there can improve on it even more you know flying vehicles and that sort of thing when I was a kid when I was a kid we watched the Jetsons buddy and I thought by now we'd all be flying vehicles and have robots to do our housework 
Where's that at? <laughs> but we're, we're not quite there yet. You know, may, maybe, maybe we'll get there. Maybe we'll get there. But you can't improve on God's design in mankind. Yeah. Psalm 139, in the 139th Psalm. Verses 13 and 14. <clears throat> For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made, marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. I will praise thee. <clears throat> For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Hey, if you're if you're a man, be a man. Right. Amen. If you're a woman, be a woman. There you go. Thank God. Thank God for who you are. Don't be ashamed of it. Don't be ashamed of it. You know, uh, praise the Lord for biblical masculinity and biblical femininity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank God for it. Amen. I think that uh, it's one of the great blessings. One of the things that, one of the reasons why that this country was so great in the beginning was because of that. Not everybody that founded this country was a Christian, but they were raised and respected Christian principles. Mm -hmm. And when you go back and study those things, you find out that one of the things that was so great in this country was the fact that men were men and women were women. Right. We've lost that somewhere. We've lost that. And, and, and men are ashamed to be men. Women are ashamed to be women. There's clarity in this confusion. We can find it right here. Maybe I don't know. Anytime that there's been any problem, it's not because of this book. It's because men have gone away from this book. Right? right. That's where the problem has happened. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, even even when we think about things like uh, uh, abortion and, and that sort of thing, you know, where where does where does life begin and and that sort of thing, you know, the scripture is very clear right here in this in this text in in Psalm one thirty nine. He says he says uh, in in verse thirteen, for thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. No. He didn't say thou took care of my of the cells that were before me <laughs> thou hast covered me in my mother's womb i praise the lord that god does that mm -hmm. that god does that mm -hmm. in romans chapter one <clears throat> Nineteen and twenty it says, "Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse." Amen. And then, if you skip on down to verse twenty-six, he says. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use of the against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was mean. Go back and you study Romans chapter 1, you find that the creation is so clear 
that even those who have never opened up their Bibles, never seen a Bible, that they are without excuse. Amen. Amen. They are without excuse. Transgenderism, sodomy, hmm. and all the such. It's unnatural. It's unnatural. It goes against nature. The phrase without excuse literally means without a defense. Mm -hmm. There's no defense, certainly not in the Bible, and not even out in nature. Right. Not even out in nature. And the evidence of God and his creation is all around. And why is it that you you reckon that these these guys, these these perverts? Mm. Want to try to get a hold of children, right? In kindergarten, first grade, second grade, very good. And groom them mm -hmm. because it's not natural. No, it's not natural. <clears throat> you see, God's word is clear. As we try to push through the clarity in this confusing world, God's word is clear that there is distinction between male and female. Not only in the way that they dress, but the way that we act and behave, the length of our hair, and so on Amen. and so forth. In God's law there in Deuteronomy chapter 22. Deuteronomy chapter 22. In verse 5, he says, The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Amen. Why do you reckon he put that into his law? Well, the reason is that when the children of Israel were out and, 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 and they were living their lives, there were people around them who were, how would we term it? They were cross-dressing. Mm -hmm. And there were people within the children of Israel that were a lot like our people, learning from the world around them. Right. And God said, hold up. You're different. Mm -hmm. You're different. Because that's abomination. There you go. Mm -hmm. and, and even in the New Testament, it, the same idea in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, First Corinthians chapter 11, verses 14 and 15. He says to the church at Corinth, Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? Amen. But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. Amen. See, there's distinctions between the sexes. Again, just two genders. He buys two. But there's distinctions there. It's a shame. It's a shame that we have to talk about this sort of thing in the world that we live in. But at the same time, if we were living in Israel, time of Deuteronomy, or if we were living in Corinth, we would have been talking about some of these same things. Right. Amen. Why? Because of the depravity of man. Amen. And the fact is that God's word does not change. And so when we think about that, we must realize that in our world, yes, the, the, some things would be a lot better if we had the Republican in the White House, but understand something. You know, uh, the trip here wouldn't have been as expensive with gas and all that sort of thing. And I, I understand that, and it hurts. But understand something, the Republican won't save this country. Amen. That's it. Amen. All right. Our hope in this confusing world, the clarity that we get isn't from the Republican Party. Amen. It's from the Word of God. Amen. Amen. It's from the Word of God. Amen. Don't get me wrong. 
I believe we ought to vote for the best man that we can. Yeah. And I don't believe we have the best man that we could have got in the White House. But I pillow my head at night, resting on the sovereignty of God, Amen. and knowing that the future of this country rests on the sovereignty of God. Amen. Just look at what God has done in the midst of having the other man in the White House. Roe v. Wade got overturned, sent back to the states. Who would have thought that would have happened? Right. Who would have thought? But it did. Amen. It did. I'm praying for revival. Yeah. But you know what? Without the Bible, all that's going to happen is every state is going to have their own abortion laws, and some of them are going to be worse than what the federal government had. Mm -hmm. Just look at what the Republican Party did just a few days ago. When the vote came up about marriage, because see, they're scared, afraid of, afraid that the court's going to take away <coughs> same-sex marriage. And so in the house, they ran a vote to try to make the law of the land for sodomite marriage. Mm. And over 40 Republicans voted with the Democrats. Having an R or a D beside a name isn't what's going to help out this country. Right. Standing on the Word of God. That's the only way that we'll see clarity here. Over in the book of Judges, chapter 21. Judges chapter 21. Verse 25. In those days there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. When this country was founded, you know what one of the rallying cries was from those fellows? One of the rallying cries was, no king but Jesus. No king but Jesus. They, they'd already come out of a king, broke away from a king. He said, we don't want another king. We don't want King George. We're done with him. No king but Jesus. They recognized that they had to submit to authority somewhere, and that authority ought to be Jesus. Yeah. Fast forward just a few generations, and we're about to, we're, we're pretty much to the point of what was in the judges. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Every man doing what's right in his own eyes. <coughs> Listen, folks. I pray for this country. I pray for my for my kids. Amen. I don't know. I don't know what what it's going to look like in another fifty years if the Lord doesn't come back soon. clarity for that. We often, when I was a kid, 
Remember, we read about Lot, Sodom and Gomorrah. We wonder why Lot didn't leave, or what it was like for Lot. I think we know now, in a lot of ways. I mean, if if the city of Dover is pretty clear, clean, like a lot of small towns are, the fact is you can't hardly turn on your TV with seeing the garbage on there. Right. It's, it's hard to even watch commercials anymore. Even Disney, you can't even hardly watch the new stuff on there. But where do we go? There's a nugget of truth that's found in 1 Corinthians that I often consider. And I think the Lord that it's there. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, because when we think about having clarity in this confusing world, yeah, God is very clear about what marriage is. God is very clear about what a male is, what a man is. Very clear about what a female is, what a woman is. Very clear about all these things and how they're supposed to work. But he's also very clear about his grace. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, Verses 9 and 10. It says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. So that's verses 9 and 10. In other words, church, don't grab the rainbow flag and hang it out. Good. Okay? I haven't been to Washington, D.C. in a long time, but I got a report from somebody recently that said that all the churches that were prominent in Washington, D.C. were flying rainbow flags in June. I, I don't doubt that that's not true. I believe it was probably true. Mainstream, quote unquote, Christianity has sold out mm -hmm. to this garbage. And 1 Corinthians <coughs> chapter 6, verses 9 and 10, and other passages tells us that God has not changed, that sin is still sin. No. Amen. And God is angry with the wicked. There's judgment coming. Mm -hmm. Amen. He's not softened in himself from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Right. God specifically mentions those who are effeminate. We used to call them early men, sodomites. <laughs> you see, Things have gotten softened up a little bit um, in our world. We're actually a lot. Instead of drunkards, we call them alcoholics. Uh, instead of fornicators, we call them living together. Instead of sodomites, we say that they're gay. No, no, no. It's all sin, folks. You're bad. Sin. But it doesn't end with verses 9 and 10. Because in verse 11, Paul writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. In other words, Paul wasn't writing on a hunch. He knew, and what he didn't know, the Holy Spirit gave him. This is the truth. Such were some of you. Such were some of you. But you're washed, but you're sanctified, but you're justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Amen. Tenses mean something. Mm -hmm. 
And so pay attention to the tenses when you're reading the scriptures. Such were some of you. There you go. Past tense. There's no such thing as a gay Christian. You got it. Just like there's no such thing as a Christian thief or a Christian whore. Okay? Such were some of you. You were those things, but not anymore. Why? Because you're washed. Present tense. Ye are washed. Ye are sanctified. Ye are justified. In what? In the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Amen. Praise the Lord. God's grace is great and far-reaching even to the worst of sinners, the chiefest of blasphemers, the worst of the worst, the lowest of the low Amen. can be saved. Amen. What does our gender-confused world need? What does this confusing world need? Where's the clarity at? It's in Christ. Amen. That's what's needed. That's what's needed. The drunkard needs Christ. Amen. The adulterer needs Christ. The sodomite needs Christ. Amen. You see, all sinners need Jesus. Amen. That's where the clarity's at. That's where life is at. That's where peace is at. That's where rest is at. In Romans chapter 1, we bring this to a close. Romans chapter 1, verses 15 and 16. He says, so as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are known also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Amen. I love this. Paul said, Paul said he was dead, or both to the Greeks, to the barbarians. To the wise, to the unwise. He said, I'm ready to preach the gospel. To you that are wrong also. He said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power. You want to get into an interesting study sometimes. Study out the Greek word behind that. It's the word dunamis. It's the same word, root word from where we get our word dynamite. If I had a stick of dynamite, Does it matter whether I'm holding it or you're holding it? No. As long as it's lit, it's going to do its job, isn't it? So it is with the gospel. Whether you are a brand new Christian, newly saved, or a seasoned saint, whether you're a God-called preacher, or whether you're not, Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You tell somebody about Christ, the gospel, yeah. the power of God unto salvation. It doesn't matter. You may be a child or a grandparent. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. It's all of God. It's all of God. Listen, I can't save anybody, and you can't save anybody, but God can. Amen. All that's needed is for us to be faithful and take that gospel out. Amen. There's some folks that you'll have access to, to speak to, that Brother Larry won't talk, be able to talk to. Right. Just on account of your circle is different than his circle. And when you have opportunity, Tell them about Christ. Mm -hmm. Don't despair saying, oh, I wish you could talk to my pastor. No, no, no. Amen. You know Jesus. Tell them. Amen. Tell them. <laughs> Tell them. <coughs> the power of God into salvation to everyone who believeth. How is a sodomite saved? 
or to put it in today's language, how is a homosexual, a lesbian, a transgender, how are they saying the same way you and I are? Amen. Amen. That's right. They need Jesus. Mm -hmm. Let us get through all the confusion, get into the Word of God and understand mm -hmm. that that's what's needed in today's world. Mm -hmm. May God have a blessing. Amen. Amen.